Now that we are getting to the end of Star Trek Picard season two, we finally have the answers we have been waiting for, and it's leading to a more complicated and confusing explanation of events than previously expected. You can't time travel! All of those little Borg Queen smirks and foreshadowing is paying off, and it looks as if the Borg will finally get a chance to assimilate pre-warp Earth. With so many moving parts and very little time left for explanations in the current season, it's obvious we are heading to a cliffhanger and conclusion to this story in season three. We believe we now understand who the Borg Queen is in the future that started this whole time loop mess in the first place. Or did she end it? Creating a temporal vortex. Time travel. So we have a few questions for you. Is Talon a friend or a foe? Is Q really trying to help Picard? This is about to become a timey-wimey mess. And while what we are about to show you is going to break your brain. Damn time travel. We promise it will make some semblance of sense in the end and perhaps even answer some questions that have been driving you nuts. Even if thinking about it might still hurt your head. So you don't want to miss this episode. I don't want to talk about time travel. If you are totally confused by Star Trek Picard's time shenanigans, then don't feel bad. They are doing something different with time travel that Star Trek doesn't do. Star Trek may have a mirror universe, but it generally operates in one timeline. And no, Discovery's Kelvin writing blunder in season three doesn't count for another 900 years. The single time travel timeline is easy for the audience to understand. We're going to attempt time travel. Kirk's future needed whales, so he went back in his timeline and stole a couple. The Borg went to Earth's past, the TNG crew followed them, they kicked their butts, and they came back to their own timeline. Very simple. One story, one timeline. Some of the best time travel stories like Back to the Future and The Terminator also keep it simple. One timeline, one story, lots of paradoxes, but hey, that's time travel. In this universe, we process time linearly, forward. But during Picard season two, they've thrown the single timeline right out the window. They have embraced Marvel's multiple timeline strategy. Yes, you can tell the story you want without having pesky time travel rules to follow, but you also confuse the audience and leave them feeling unsure about what path they should be following. Stories that span multiple timelines are confusing, illogical, and in our opinion, a crutch for lazy writing. How does one even time travel to an alternate reality that shouldn't even exist? I'm gonna throw you my DeLorean gun it to 88. Oh, don't worry, we are about to find out. Star Trek Picard is actually working in three different timelines. We start the show in the correct prime timeline. The year is 2401, and Picard just shot down a pretty hot older Romulan lady. After a little soul searching and some nightmares about his mom, Picard is summoned to his old ship, the USS Stargazer, by the voice of the Borg Collective. Once there, he is confronted by a Borg vessel no one has ever seen before, coming out of some sort of spatial anomaly with minor tachyon levels and massive Alder Lasky temporal radiation. Say that three times. <laughs> The message is, help us Picard. Unbelievably, the Borg's goal is to join the Federation, and they request a private meeting with Picard. Instead of trusting the Borg, which is in general a good idea, Rios goes to Red Alert, and a masked Borg Queen is transported onto the bridge anyways. The Queen says, we want peace, but first we require power. She connects to the bridge controls and begins assimilating not only the Stargazer, but the entire Federation fleet to build up power. The Queen tells them they are out of time. The French song, Non Je Ne Regrette Rien, begins to play. In English, it means, no, I do not regret anything. And when Jean-Luc was a child, his mother would have the computer play that song in an attempt to calm her nervous son. Also plucking one of his mother's lines, the Borg Queen tells Picard to look up, and then everything explodes. If you've been watching Picard season two, then you know Gerardi and the Borg Queen are one. We believe this faceless Borg Queen in episode one is the Gerardi Borg Queen almost 400 years later. Crazy, right? But hold on to that thought for a second, and let's look at the facts. The Borg ship is of a design we have never seen before, and the rift it is coming through has tachyon levels and temporal radiation. So first and foremost, we know some sort of time travel is occurring. The Borg Queen tells the bridge they are out of time. Not that they have no time left, but that they are literally not in the correct timeline. 
Remember, the queen originally wanted to talk to Picard alone, perhaps to convince him that she once was Gerardi from a different timeline. But because Rios and Seven didn't trust her, she did the only thing she could do. She took control of the Stargazer while at the same time playing the French music and telling Picard to look up as if to calm Picard and let him know everything was going to be okay. The Gerardi Borg Queen then uses the power she has generated to shift Picard into an alternate timeline. We call this the Corrupted Timeline. This is the future Earth that has become a xenophobic, conquering society eerily like the Mirror Universe. Picard learns from the Borg Queen being held captive in that timeline that the change in history happens in 2024 and to search out the Watcher. It's important to note that Picard and his crew have traveled back in time along this corrupted timeline. This is why Guinan doesn't know Picard, because in the corrupted timeline, Picard never goes back in time to meet her. Once Picard meets Talon, the Laris lookalike Watcher, he learns she is watching an important person in the timeline, his ancestor René Picard. He also learns Q is trying to convince René not to go on the Europa mission, and Jean-Luc determines this is the point in history that Q changes. And this is where we run into a whole bunch of problems. We will eventually learn that Q did not shift the timeline, and that he is actually trying to help Picard. But at this point, Picard is convinced Q is trying to hurt him. Jean-Luc has no knowledge of his ancestor René, but he does know that the Europa mission was important in his correct timeline's history. If that mission was important for him to know about in history, why wouldn't he know that his ancestor was on that mission? It's because she wasn't. When Picard and Talos get back to the La Serena and his crew, Jean-Luc tells them he has no idea who she is, but he does know that René went on the Europa mission and brought back a microorganism from Io that she believed was sentient. The only problem is that if Picard doesn't know anything about her, then the only way he could learn about her future and what happened to her on the Europa mission was from the La Serena computers. And where does the La Serena come from? The Corrupted Timeline. And since we know the Corrupted Timeline is wrong, that means they have it all wrong about Renee. She is not supposed to go on that mission and bring back that sentient life form. Because it is very likely if she does so, Adam Soong will have exactly what he needs to complete his project and become the person that leads us into the future of the Corrupted Timeline. Remember when we see Picard in his horrific future? We hear the voice of Adam Soong. The same galaxy is a human galaxy. He is revered in the future corrupted timeline. Even the shield surrounding the Earth looks like a larger version of the technology he uses to protect his daughter from the sun. So it makes complete sense that Q has been trying to get Rene not to go on the mission. He was also going to do it by snapping his fingers, but then nothing happened. So he had to resort to becoming her therapist. And then he had to go straight to the source. He gave Soong a serum that didn't work and then used that to get his help to stop Rene. When that didn't work, Q showed Soong's daughter the truth about him and gave her a serum that worked so she could leave and he wouldn't have access to his experiment any further. Q knows that he needs to shut down both Rene and Soong. But let's not forget Talon. Something isn't right with her. A Romulan supervisor watching over humanity? We got the awesome callback to Gary Seven and the TOS episode Assignment Earth. Gary was a human whose ancestors had been abducted from Earth around 4000 BC and was taken to another planet 1000 light years away to be trained by advanced beings and eventually to be sent back to help Earth. In 1968, Gary sabotaged the launch of an orbital missile platform to prevent nuclear war. So why would the mission change for the supervisors? If Gary can sabotage a launch to avoid World War III, why can't Talon guide Rene to the Europa mission to do the same thing? Don't forget, World War III takes place in only two years from the time these events are happening. The future of the corrupted timeline is one in which humanity finds a way to avoid World War III and also become much stronger. Isn't this what the advanced beings wanted? For the supervisors to guide Earth and make it stronger? So the question remains, is Talon one of the good guys? Here is a good question for you. Why is a 21st century Romulan serving as a supervisor on Earth? She did say sometimes it happens, but is she telling the truth? Is it just poor writing to connect Laris to Talon? Or are we about to see a twist? The Romulan Star Empire wouldn't even exist for another 128 years. At the time Talon is on Earth as a Watcher, the Romulans likely don't even have warp drive capabilities yet. 
Hopefully the writers have something exciting in store for us with Talon, or it will be a disappointment. Let me explain something. And now with the Jurati Borg Queen assimilating soldiers, we are seeing the birth of the third timeline, which we are calling the Borg Queen Timeline. In this timeline, the future of the corrupted timeline should cease to exist as the Jurati Borg Queen slowly assimilates 21st century Earth. Jurati is mostly helpless as the Borg Queen dominates her body eating car batteries. Yeah, we aren't gonna go there. I wish it was better, you know, but it is so stupid. But what we believe is that almost 400 years from now, Jurati will wrestle control of the Collective from the Borg Queen and using the massive power the Collective has created, punch a hole from the Jurati Borg Queen timeline to the correct Prime timeline and try to connect with Picard, ultimately shifting him to the corrupted timeline and starting the loop all over again. Does your brain hurt as much as ours? It's either a bootstrap paradox, or a grandfather paradox, or a reverse bootstrap paradox. Oh. Enough! My head hurts. How Jurati Borg Queen is able to punch through a timeline into another timeline that doesn't exist, and shift Picard into a third timeline that really shouldn't exist, is anyone's guess. Hopefully Picard showrunner Terry Metalis will break all this down for us. Whatever time travel shenanigans are still to come. A, a time machine for time travel. The one thing we know for sure is that Picard will have more help from some old friends very soon. Perhaps Q's last act for Picard before he dies will be to give him a little help from his old friends. What do you think? Do you think Jurati is the future Borg Queen? Is Talon telling the truth or are the Romulans somehow secretly behind this? Is Star Trek making a mistake using so many timelines or does this make the story better? Let's talk about it in the comments below. Here's the deal, boys. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so now. And give us a thumbs up if you want more news about your favorite shows. Also, click the notification bell to never miss an episode. <laughs> and visit our merch store to see how to get this awesome Star Trek inspired graphic design. Get 20% off your purchase by using coupon code THEPOPCAST. The link is in the description below.